Hey folks, this is James. Welcome to another tutorial. This time I'm going to have a look at how to create an electric curve. It can be used for things like lightning and electric arcs. And we're going to use a couple of the new nodes in Blender 3.0, which is currently in Alpha. So the new nodes are Curve to Mesh and Resample Curve. And we'll set up some parameters. So you've got top level control over things like random thickness, the speed, number of points, and the amount of displacement. And animating them can be particularly good on some curved text because you can do things like animate that up for motion graphics effects as well as the amount of displacement. Okay so here we are in a fresh scene. Let's start with a cube, delete all the vertices, rename that to Geo Nodes, add in a new Geometry Nodes modifier and that shows up on the stack. Break that connection. So we need two curves to start with. Grab your standard Bezier, call this curve. Just going to hide that. I'm going to add in Bezier circle 0.05 on the radius and just call that profile and hide that. So come back to our geometry nodes graph and drag in that curve, hook up the geometry to the geometry group output. You can see we get something in the viewport. Grab the curve to mesh node and this turns it into an actual mesh with points but it's not renderable at the moment, so we need to add some thickness to it. So grab our profile and pipe that into there. And now I've got actual 3D geometry. I've got too much geometry there. So change that to say two. Could even go down to one, but two should be fine. We want to grab the other, basically the only other curve node in here. Resample curve. Okay, drop that in there in between. And what this does, it adjusts the number of points in that curve. So in our case, we'll just call that 16. You want to get control of that profile. So if we grab, let's say, attribute randomize. Now there's a built-in one called radius. You can see I actually put it in the wrong way. We want to have that coming after the resample. Otherwise, you're adjusting the initial curve, which only had two points. So in this case, because it's got 16, you can see it's giving us a lot more geometry to work with. For the moment, I'm just going to say 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is fine. And to give us more control, We'll create a custom parameter for both of these. First off, let's drag in that into the empty socket. So that was our curve. This is going to give us control over adjusting this later on. So let's just call that curve. 
and then pipe in this min empty socket max into an empty socket. So that's basically radius min and radius max. Now a lot of the time you may want them on the same values but at least that gives you control now if you wanted to randomize that. Okay, we might just make that 0.2 and 0.2 for the moment, just a bit thinner. So how are we going to get this randomized kind of arcing look to the spline? Basically the same thing we've done here, but we're going to do it with position. So if we grab another attribute randomize, And you can see position is in your list, so grab that, change this to vector, and straight away you can see we're getting something randomized. The problem is that it's true randomization. We actually just wanted to add to our original values. So that's way too much. So let's grab input value node, pipe that in, and see if I scrub that through, it's adjusting how much is displacing. But what we really want is the negative for the min. So that's easily achieved. So math, make sure that doesn't connect Auto connect can be annoying at times. Put another one into here, change it to multiply and minus one, and then pipe that into the min of our attribute randomize. So, what that's doing, it's going to fold that down. Anything that comes in here, basically, it's multiplying at minus one, so you get the negative range. So now that we've got that, if we had that on zero, no displacement, and as we scrub that up, you can see it's going in both directions. And depending on the seed value, you get a different look. And in this case, we're going to use the seed value to actually animate. So the way we're going to do that is grab another input value, type in hash frame, and that's a driver giving us our frame number, and just pipe that into the seed. Now we need control over the speed of that because it's probably a bit fast. Grab utilities math node, put that in between, change it to multiply, and 0.5 is probably good. We can adjust that later. So while we're there, let's pipe that into the empty socket of the group input and rename that to speed. And one other one while we're there. Let's pipe the count and we'll change that to point count. Now to give us that lightning sort of look, let's change the material. Put the default material on, let's just call it say blue glow. Change the emission all the way up and just to a pure blue value. Emission strength on 10. And since we're in Eevee, let's turn the bloom on and put it into Eevee mode. Now you notice nothing happens. That's one of those real gotchas at the moment with geometry nodes. So go to your material and change that to object. And 
and reapply the material. And you can see we've got it there. Change the background to a pure black. Hide everything. And we're pretty much there already. Now you might want to crank that up even further. We'll give it slightly wider value. That'll make it glow even more. Okay, now just as a final thing, come back to our parameters here. You'll notice now we can control everything from the top level. The only thing we don't have control over is the amount of this displacement. Because at the moment, this position is being controlled by this. Now the only problem here is that we want one value going into a float socket and a vector. The way around that, grab another math node, disconnect those, leave that there, pipe that into there, and into the vector. And now when we put this in to the empty socket, it comes in as a float. So we want to add nothing to it. So this is essentially acting as kind of like a bridge between those two different value types, the float and the vector. So this is kind of like a null, it's not doing anything. Now we want to rename that to displace. The displacement is fine. All right, now we've got all the controls we need. If you had that on zero, you get no displacement. As you can see, you've got thickness. A lot of control there. Do that on 0.5 and the point count. I'm just going to leave that on 16 for the moment. And the whole idea of having this exposed for the curve is that we can add in another curve type. So if we said, say, say the text, and then if we convert that. So let's just edit the text. Just say node is fine. And convert that to a curve. See now it's a curve type. Hide that. And change that to the text. So now I can freely change between different curves. And of course we could have multiple curves in the scene and have them all being controlled by this same setup. And this is actually quite cool on text because you can do things like, for instance, the point count and animate text up and down, as well as the amount of displacement So that's the tutorial. If you like this, please like and subscribe. And I'll have this project file available for Patreon subscribers. So thanks for watching.